YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Koozie. Welcome to the Phasmophobia Complete Map Guide Series. We're going to be covering every single map in the game through this series. I'm going to be talking about uh, all the hiding spots, uh, all the breaker spawns, all of the cursed possession spawns, and a couple of tips and tricks you need to know about every single map, okay? So first up is going to be Tanglewood, and here are the settings we're playing on. We're playing on Amateur Preset, dude, and uh, I've got a couple things uh, engaged here. Uh, like all of the curse possession spawns, uh, no setup time, but we're not doing any like friendly ghosts or anything like that. So we are, we are actually going to be doing a contract, but we're just not going to get any money for it. So stick around, make sure to like, and subscribe. If you want to find your way back for more content like this, I'm recording this live on my stream right now. I stream Phasmo every Sunday around 8 PM Eastern. So if you want to come join me for that link is in the description. Enough pitter patter, chitter chatter. Let's get into it. Uh, so nothing fancy here, but what I do want to talk about is... First and foremost, I so with these custom settings, I think I had the breaker starting on. Maybe not. I don't think I've changed that. Uh, I think we're going to turn on the breaker first, and then I'll talk about keys and stuff like that. So the breaker does start on, but in the event that you need to find the breaker, there are two locations that the breaker can spawn on Tanglewood, and that is here in the garage and straight across down in the basement, which is, in this case, where this one is. We just heard a door open up. The breaker is on, and I really don't think I had the breaker starting on. So, interesting. So, while we're down here, there are two cursed possession spawns in the basement. There is the summoning circle, and then over here, there is the Ouija board. Uh, I'm not going into the cursed possessions. I'll make a completely separate guide on that. Now, let me know in the comments, for those of you that want a cursed possession guide, do you want me to break it up into series, uh, where I do a specific video on that specific thing? Um, or do you want to do a whole video where I've got timestamps? So let me know down below. All right, so back into the garage here. Uh, by the way, the bone is here in the garage. The bone spawns randomly, okay? That, that is not something that I can just say on Tanglewood. The bone will always be here because it's completely random. So you're going to need to go into every room and uh, look for it. But uh, in the garage, there is the voodoo doll spawn. And that's the only one that spawns in here. In the dining room area, as far as cursed possessions go, you have the monkey paw right here in this cabinet. You have to open the thing, and then you can grab it and use it. And then over here in the living room, uh, we have the mirror on this wall. And then over here on this end table in the living room, you have the tarot cards. And then the final cursed possession that spawns, or cursed possession spawn location, is going to be in the nursery so when you walk through the front door take a left and then this door right here in this room there's the music box so there's all of your cursed possessions now hiding spots i never play with hiding spots on but i will say a good rule of thumb to check for hiding spots is going to be your closets so you have a closet in the hallway there you have a hallway closet here and then you have this closet in the boys bedroom and how you know if it's open or not is you'll open up the door and there won't be a bunch of shit in the way preventing you from hopping in there okay so if it's empty you're good to go in the nursery what i like to do is sometimes i'll hide over here but the official hiding spot in the nursery is going to be right here uh sometimes there will be stuff in the way but you see how the there's boxes stacked up on top of the crib it breaks the ghost line of sight so even though it's not like a closet where you can shut the door it still breaks the ghost line of sight and whenever i get into the makeshift hiding spots uh on some of these maps it'll it'll make sense but basically all you need for a hiding spot is something that's going to break the ghost line of sight the other thing i'll mention about the closet hiding spots and whenever we get to the garage the lockers um, when you get into a hiding spot, you want to get in and pull the door and hold it shut because when the ghost hunts, if it comes by, it will fling the doors open. Okay. So you have to pull it shut and hold it while the ghost is hunting. All right. But yeah, here is the, uh, the other closet in the hallway. Now in this bedroom, we don't really have like an official hiding spot. Uh, but again, if you can just separate yourself from the ghost, get some distance, and then go into a room and shut the doors and break the line of sight, you'll be fine. The This closet works kind of well. Now, if you're using a room as a hiding spot, it's not the same as a closet where I can't go into this this closet, even though it's a closet, it's a room still and hold the door shut. The, the ghost can go through the big doors, okay? Over here in the living room, there's not really any 
uh, hiding spots. Uh, there is a looping spot if you're a looper. Any looper enjoyers? You can loop it around the coffee table if you want. In the kitchen, same thing. There's not really any hiding spots. We had EMF five, by the way. And since we're an amateur, we're getting all three. So we'll go ahead and do this simultaneously. But what you can do is you can actually hide over here. This is a makeshift hiding spot because it breaks the ghost line of sight. Uh, if you watch any of my streams or any of my videos, you'll notice that anytime I'm on Tanglewood, I like to bring the ghost into the kitchen and loop it around the island. Because again, crouching behind this breaks the ghost line of sight. And so it makes it easy uh, to stay out of the ghost like path of aggression, if you'll call it. But yeah, back into the basement. We have one hiding spot for sure, and it's gonna be this back corner, which as you can see, it's it's got this uh, these two sheets of plywood set up, uh, so it's an official hiding spot, but sometimes there won't be anything there, and therefore it won't be like considered a hiding spot, um, but you can still hide back here. It's just if the ghost comes down here, and it comes back here, you'll you'll basically die. So yeah, that pretty much covers that. Now in the laundry room, there's no there's no hiding spots, man. Good luck, dude. This is just kind of like a room to pass through. In the garage, this is another looping spot. You can take it around the car. This is a, if you're wanting to get into looping, this is actually the best place to do it around the car because you don't have to worry about being crouched or anything. And uh, sometimes I think they changed this up because you used to be able to see through the windows and see the ghost. Uh, whenever it's coming around the car, but this is probably the easiest way to do it and to learn how to loop because looping is really easy and it's not meant to be something that you do throughout the entirety of the hunt. I just do it because I'm stupid slash insane sometimes, but it's meant to be kind of like a way to give yourself more time. So you just basically lure the ghost this way and I'm not trying to make this a looping guide. I'll, I'll make a looping guide if you want me to let me know in the comments, but you just bring the ghost down around this way and you just keep going and then that'll give your, yourself time to run away, maybe build up your stamina again. But uh, back to the garage here. So if you want to, if you're feeling a little frisky, this isn't exactly a hiding spot, but again, anything that breaks the ghost line of sight is considered a hiding spot, okay? Uh, you just, if you're not in like an official hiding spot, it's important to use your ears because if the ghost, if you hear the ghost walking this way, then you might want to move and maybe go into like an actual hiding spot like these lockers here. So yeah. And speaking of hiding spots, for the love of God, dude, turn off your equipment if you are in a hiding spot. I had one of my viewers who uh, picked up the console version of Phasmo for the first time and was like, dude, I had a yokai and I died because I was hunting or uh, it was hunting and I was in a closet and it still killed me and I was like, it's probably because you had your equipment on. So make sure you have your flashlight off. Make sure if you've got an electronic in your hand, that's off and uh, you should be fine. And then obviously turn on push to talk or whatever you want to do. If you're talking, the ghost can hear you slash detect you. So I've, I've got videos on how to stop playing scared and, you know, things to help you as a beginner when the ghost is hunting. But let's figure out what type of ghost we're dealing with here. I would say uh, we had EMF five. Uh, it's not an Oni, because it did an airball just then. But what we can do... Actually, you know what? What I'll do is I'm going to get this ghost to hunt me, and I'm going to use a hiding spot. So you know you see it live and in action. All right? And we're going to get a little crazy with it. Actually, I do want to check for freezing real quick. Okay, it's moving stuff. We got EMF5 again. Hello? Okay, I don't think it's freezing. I'm gonna use my favorite cursed possession, the mirror. No, I'm not. We're gonna we're gonna make this video a little bit interesting here and do tarot card roulette. Now, again, this isn't a video on the cursed possessions, but okay. Well, that card meant that the ghost is hunting, so you can loop it around the coffee table if you want to. I kind of screwed myself over right there. <laughs> okay, and I'm talking right now, but I have push to talk on in game, so I have all of my equipment off. I'm hiding in the hiding spot. I'm not talking in game, and the lights go out. That tells me that the hunt is over. You can also test that if you're on like a bigger map and flick the light switches because during a hunt, you can't do that. 
All right, uh, now, I like to loop the ghost because I like to pick up on its hunt behavior, like any blinking, any speed or anything like that. Like relying on that instead of just the evidence, it makes the game so much more fun because it's more challenging. Going off of that hunt, I can already tell that it's not any of the fast ghosts that we have left. So Raiju is out of the question. It didn't speed up because I had my flashlight on. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be a Wraith. Uh, it didn't, I don't think it's a gen. And it sounded, I just got done doing the weekly challenge, by the way, which this week, it's the uh, the apocalypse draws near. And so all of the ghosts are running at like 150% speed. Plus, right now at the time of recording is the Crimson Eye event. So when you play maps like that, all of the ghosts are at like 125% speed. Um, so my speed radar is a little bit off right now. So I don't think it's the twins. Those are the, that's the, the twins and the Raiju are the only two like speed modified ghosts, but we can, we can check for Wraith right here, actually. If it steps in the salt, we also have some tarot cards to pull as well. Okay, it stepped in the salt, it's not a Wraith. So that rules that out. We can also check for more evidence as well. It's 1.3. I use Celsius just because it's easier. We can pull another card if we want to. Okay, my sanity is now at 0%. And that card, if it hadn't changed to the full, would have resulted in my immediate demise. Okay, we're at negative 25%, just kidding. Okay, turn off the breaker. It's not a Jin that confirms that. Jin can't turn off the breaker because it's tied to its ability. So, we're going to go down and turn on the breaker again. Because, uh, a quick tip, the, uh, the breaker being on allows you to keep the lights on, and keeping the lights on prevents your sanity from draining on small maps. Okay, it's hunting. That sounds like normal speed. It's not a gen. And it changed ghost rooms, I think. Because it started the hunt from like here and not here. So that tells me it's not a Gorio. It hasn't shape shifted. But then again, I haven't really looked at hello. Aw, oh, you suck. Uh, so I was reminded by one of my viewers that, uh, on amateur mode, which is what we're on, uh, the ghosts cannot change ghost rooms. So it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a Gorio or not. I am gonna check for ghost orbs, though. It turned out the breaker again. Okay, we have no ghost orbs. And on amateur, you can- you can cross out evidence, too, by the way. All right, turn off the breaker again. <laughs> so fucking annoying. I hate it whenever it does that. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get some some stuff going here. Now, I haven't been in the room with it whenever it started a hunt, so the shade won't hunt usually. It usually won't hunt if you're in the same room as it. So if we have spirit box, it's a spirit, which I don't think it is because I think it's been. Under three minutes since it's hunted. Well, let's test that real quick. That's a ghost event. Okay, so this is not the ghost changing ghost rooms. It's just roaming. The biggest struggle for me whenever I first started playing Faz was differentiating the... What the f... What? What the hell was that? It took one step. Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? How old are you? Okay. Have that. All right. So that tells me it's definitely not a wraith. We ruled that out. It's not freezing. So we're dealing with the spirit. We can confirm that without evidence if we smudge it and it doesn't hunt for three minutes, which that's yeah, that's about it right there. All right, so we're going to call it a spirit here. We could go for other stuff, but I'm not making money off of this anyways. So there's no, 
There's no point in getting the objectives done. Especially since this isn't a, um, a Blood Moon map. So that is, uh, that's pretty much all you gotta know about Tanglewood. If I left anything out, feel free to drop that info down in the comments. Um, we're gonna go through all the maps here. I will say at the time of recording this, Point of Hope, I'm still trying to learn all the, all the spawns and all that stuff. Uh, but hopefully by the time we get to it, it'll be fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more content like this and other Phasmo stuff, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you're a new player and you're having trouble figuring out what the difference between a ghost event and a ghost hunt is, check out this video right here and I'll see you over there. All right.